Good Monday morning. Here we go, still inside this parenthesis, but at the end of the final judgment. It says this in verse 14. Then I looked and behold a white cloud and seated on the cloud one like a son of man with a golden crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. We know who this is. This is Jesus, our, our Lord. And another angel came out of the temple calling with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud, put in your sickle and reap for the hour to reap has come for the harvest of the earth is fully ripe. So he who sat on the cloud swung his sickle across the earth and the earth was reaped. Then another angel came out of the temple in heaven and he too had a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, the angel who has authority over the fire, and he called with a loud voice to the one with the sharp sickle, put in your sickle and gather the clusters from the vine of the earth, for its grapes are ripe. So the angel swung his sickle across the earth and gathered the grape harvest of the earth and threw it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the wine press was trodden outside the city, and blood flowed from the wine press as high as a horse's bridle for 1600 stadia. Let's unpack this for a moment. Twice it says, Put your sickle in, for the harvest of the earth is fully ripe. What this means is the moment in time where I want you to, I don't know if you think about this, but I think about this often. What is the time when the Lord says, this is as far as we're going? Um, My judgment will not be stayed anymore. This is the end. And this is that moment. This is that moment of the end. Why is it the end? It's at the end because the earth is fully ripe with sin. It means there's no more salvation to come, no more people choosing, and God knows when that moment is done. He knows when the earth is fully ripe with its sin, and its hearts are so hard that they will not turn anymore. And so Jesus then puts his sickle in, and he harvests it. And judgment comes, the wrath of God. And it goes into this moment of the actual battle of Armageddon, the battle at at Megiddo that um, we'll talk about to come. But in this battle of Armageddon, the, the moment where God has gathered all of these armies and they battle, the blood will be so high, it says, as high as a horse's bridle. That's what the judgment is going to look like. It's inconceivable to our minds. And yet there will come a time where man chooses his sin for so long that God says, no more. It's over. But do you know what this reminded me of when I read this? It reminded me of this passage in Matthew 9, verses 37 and 38. And it says this, send out harvesters to the harvest because it's plenty, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. If you've been doing this study with me this year and you're a follower of Jesus, there are people that will have to suffer and walk through this tribulation, and they may be people that we know because I truly believe we're in the end time harvest. But there's still time for you and I to harvest the fields. And each one of us needs to be asking ourselves the question, Father, what am I doing to bring the harvest in that's plentiful right now, Scripture tells us. It says, but the workers are few. I don't want to be a follower of Jesus Christ and not working for kingdom purposes to bring the harvest in while it can still come. 
So that's my challenge to you on this Monday morning to ask yourself the question, Lord, how can I harvest your field in this generation, in the city that I live in, in the neighborhood that I live in, in the school that my kids go to? How can I be a harvester and a worker for you? Because there's still time. We're not at this final harvest yet, but we do have fields that are ripe for the harvest. And we are workers that can reap the harvest still to come. May we pay attention to that as we start this Monday morning. Mm -hmm.